creating a very awkward situation for us. You know how you can't do that? It's if you don't attach to it. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, I can see how that would be a problem. Towards? Yeah, close the ones go to the uh, uh, It doesn't have another energy, right. which is something you really want to deal with with all this pressure right away. But I wonder if you can go for a big LG next year if your hand is that free. Um, confusion flips are some of the most exciting things in this game. <laughs> Uh, now, if you flip tails, it would not count as using your GX attack because the attack fails before you even get a chance to use it. But uh, if you get heads, the GX attack would go through. It would draw a French name of 10 cards. And the damage doesn't especially matter if you work to flip tails. Uh, here we go, big flip for confusion. Trampa is confused and it's heads. The big wheel succeeds. Well, it's the same as the little All right, 10 cards for our Norwegian player. Right off the bat. A bit of fortune going his way. Sometimes you just got to take the risk in the face of an SBM GX and the risk of confusion. Uh, it's still a 50-50 shot that your attack goes through and there was really a lot of downside I don't think. Uh, either way, a double bonus energy would have been a psychic knockout with the choice band involved. So uh, I don't think there's any major risk there, but maybe later in the game we could see uh, higher stakes so coming back over to Ryan, I do see an N in his hand, so maybe eyeing up the possibility of uh, shuffling the big wheel that hand. He yeah, also has Bridget, just uh, set up to go with the Bridget here. Yeah, he wants to continue to set up without playing item cards, and this is going to be the best way to do it. Bridget being a supporter of her, that can get three basic Pokemon onto your bench. We'll probably see two Trubbish, since two of them are prized, <laughs> and then uh, probably another Eevee. Or he's actually even eyeing up Soto Wood over here. Interesting. So here we see uh, Roblox in the window and two Trubbish hitting the bench. Uh, maybe just thinking, I know my opponent uses a lot of those Tapu Lele to close up games, so maybe if I force him to have a slightly smaller bench, uh, he'll get clogged and not have exactly what he wants later in the game. Yeah, that's certainly something that could come up. You know, Torrid plays four Tapu Lele GX in his deck, and he relies on them quite a bit, so just taking away one of those bench spots could end up being big later. So right, Tatches to the bench Trubbish. And it looks like we're probably going to another side game. There it is. And a few months ago, this would be great. Uh, there were really no healing cards being played in these Dark Lord oh, yeah, so once you put that 60 damage there, you can feel pretty safe that you would have an easy knockout later. Now we have Ace of Roa in the mix, so it could undo a lot of that damage that has been done, and that's something to keep an eye out for as uh, the game progresses. Now we shot from see a Torda. Go on that and grab the Bridget off this top of the lane, so maybe not look for all the look there. He's well, high and I'm just thinking about it. Yeah, well, he already grabbed the Bridget. He saw it. Okay. So uh, he has made his choice. The face step card right there, he revealed it. Uh, just wanted to keep searching to, to yeah, make sure he knows what's going on. I would say I probably know, so yeah. Option definitely will be available to him if he decides to take this right trade by right later to clear the damage up. In general, it's a very strong card. It's just very situational. So we'll see which basic Pokemon he wants to take off of the printed. He only has one open bench spot after that. And maybe he just wants another Trampa GX, and it was his only way to get it. And the other potential thing is he wants to sit more away his hand and wants to get a useless Bridget into his discard. So we see, uh, let's play the Bridget. And I guess he'll be the Bridget to get one more edge Pokemon. And now he's got Garbage Box now, so he's taken away the Roblox. Okay, he does have the attached as well. Yeah, so he can Bridget now for a two edge Pokemon. One extra, maybe relevant, although I'll have a tool scrapper, you'll immediately have to discard one. Yeah, which I think yeah, you can find with you just like, discard the top of the yeah, LGX. Yeah, so yeah you see that full five oh, down that the door has yeah, yeah. Yeah. activated. Those are always good. Electro ball. And that's one option I guess you can use as well when you're running the SP on yeah, this version of this ball. That's pretty common. No. So I mean, are we gonna see the acid spray? Here it is. Another big coin flip early on in this game for Torrin Reclip. He hit heads on the first one for the big beetle GX. Will he be able to discard the energy with acid spray? Here we go. And it's another heads for Torrin with a discarded energy on Ryan's side. And 80 damage. That's a big amount for just one energy on that little rubbish. You see the power of choice man right there. Turns a 10 damage attack into a 40 damage attack, and then weakness adds times two 
Yeah, so a 10 damage attack got boosted to 80 damage with all these modifiers. Choice Band is one of the strongest tools in the game right now. I think it deals 30 extra damage to GX and EX both times huge. It's uh, such a big tool, it's used in almost every deck, I feel like. But uh, you can see, even in unconventional ways, sometimes it's still incredibly powerful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you can see Torn, I think, respects his opponent quite a bit. I remember his interview after the International Championship scene. It was crazy, right? Saying he's an insanely good player. Uh, maybe not afraid to take some risks like this. Going for the confusion flip, going for the acid spray flip, uh, knowing that, hey, I'm not going to help play this person. I need to take some risks when it makes sense. And uh, so far, they are paying off. So you're receiving that coming up. Uh, players still getting the six cards. No knockouts taken for one damage that thrown each way. And I don't know if I see a new psychic energy over on Ryan's side. Does not look like it, and that means no attack from this SP on GX on this turn. And that's pretty annoying for Ryan. I mean, he can't really attack this trouble, so he'll get hit for another 80 damage. Potentially, that card over is all mistakes. Or the Trubbish evolves into Gargoyle, if you see like double bonus energy, acid spray. Um, the first item card going into Ryan's discard pile now would make a trash lunge do 100 damage after the choice band of weakness, so lots of weird stuff going on. So here we see, uh, I think the option just dropped the temple of the down and not search for support. Yeah, oh, that was our talks. Oh, of course, uh, but just dropping the temple of the energy on. Like he needs to have some kind of counter attacker somewhere to put this double double energy. Yeah, you don't want to miss the energy attachment. You certainly want to put it somewhere. Back over on Torn's end. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do an item count on each side. One on each side. <laughs> yeah. So both of these players, I'm sure, have played this kind of matchup many times. I know Torn has. Ryan probably has as well. The yeah, idea is to play as few item oh, cards as possible. And if you don't lower them down and add one to each player's discard pile, one for Tor, and they discard a tool for Ryan. And here's a big Professor Sycamore, so things are starting to heat up a little bit. I think Torn is digging for that double colorless energy, as well as the Gargoyles being an acid spray for the knockout in their hands. But at this point, he didn't even well, just mean, uh, the second uh, item of this turn. Yeah, I think that's what we're hoping to do. Find him, any one of his tools from the discard pile. That's a couple of things you'd have to go on to the draft or the main discard pile. Or that. And then he has multiple attacks to back up. Yeah. I didn't realize that's a couple of things you'd have to do on the draft. Uh, 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 there we do see the trash range, and the first two rush cards are taken for Tor and Reckliff. Yeah, this is why a lot of players felt like SB on GX was a liability in the mirror match. That weakness to Psychic can come up very big against even small amounts of item cards in the discard pile, or even uh, crazy acid spray with choice man knockouts. It would do an exact 200 damage after weakness. But it uh, looks like Ryan is going to try to find a way out after this. He is forced to play all extra cards here, and he put up a fight against towards a trash lynch. I think we may enter that stage of the game where it's a trash lynch battle uh, between garbage lynches. I need to make our score only getting four. Everybody can, right? That's another trubbish battle. Uh, exactly. He just wants more of that. He'll definitely get another card this turn. Three item cards in towards this card pile, so trash lamps for 60 times two gets to 120, the perfect man. Or an outcome is just going to be. How does Ryan then respond to, say, Grandpa GX? He doesn't have a big attacker lined up. There's not enough character, not enough item cards in towards discard piles and not going to have one attack, so. Right now, it looks like Torin is the one in firm control. He has the prize lead, he kind of has the board position. Oh, 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 see if Ryan can kind of wiggle his way out of this spot. Yeah, I think if that clean uh, drain the GX is a little rough, it's going to be very difficult to deal with. Another like double bonus that you got by targeting, I think you don't want to as oh, much. I think it should uh, be the And only someone's going to trap the little trash yeah, lane here. Yeah, yeah, prize. Yeah, cool line. Cool, uh, Oh, Indeed, the trash battle has become uh, one knockout for Ryan. He does get one of his prize and rubbish out of his prize cards. So he'll be able to play another one down. And this might just 
come down to who can piece together enough attacking Pokemon in a row to take their prize cards. We're going to start seeing big attacks back and forth. Towards the end, he was dead to wait, but there's only still some energy to work with. Rainbow down on his trap, which he has to finish. Split when he's attacking his turn, and he's from Big Berserk. Yeah, it sure looks like it. Uh, 